I just watched a movie that probably made me more hungry than anything. Let's discuss. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. The menu focuses on a group of people who visit an exclusive high-end destination restaurant on a remote island where an eccentric yet acclaimed chef has prepared a complex menu with a twist. Now listen, I'd be lying to you if I said that we haven't seen movies like this before. Typically they aren't contained within a restaurant, but the idea of a seemingly random group of people being invited to an exotic and strange location and all hell eventually breaking loose shouldn't be all that foreign to anyone. Whoopie fucking do. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed. I do think this movie has a few things to offer that make it at least a somewhat unique experience. The structure of this movie is divided up in the same way that a fancy restaurant menu would be. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So the movie is almost in chapters. And if you take into account that each dish that is served has a deeper meaning as it pertains to why these people are here, I think that is a different way to approach this idea narratively. I like it a lot. This movie very much has a message about the pretentiousness of people and society for that matter. There's something to be said about someone who doesn't do what they love out of pure love anymore. They only do it because they have to. Or perhaps there are outside forces that won't allow them to enjoy it any longer. So what you have is this kind of clever commentary that you can apply to food, or occupations, or even movies. The possibilities for an idea like this are endless, and I think for that reason it will resonate with people. I think it really resonated with me because I am a movie critic. That makes sense. But sometimes I do understand the struggle of critiquing something when I would much rather just sit back and enjoy it. On a personal note, that's why I try to watch movies that I love from time to time just to kind of give myself a break from being a critic. The menu kind of pokes fun at these pretentious ideas, ironically by being pretentious. My, how the tables have turned. The only flaw that I can see in this logic from a movie perspective is if you look at modern Hollywood who's getting very relaxed about how they make movies, and they've created this space where we get fun movies that are completely devoid of any love being put into them. It's kind of the opposite of what the message of the movie is, but I guess there's a few different ways you can take it. The other thing that I really enjoyed about the menu is the cast and the performances, because I thought everyone did an excellent job with what they were given. I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Anya Taylor-Joy is quickly becoming one of my favorite new actresses in Hollywood. Between movies like this and The Northman from earlier this year, not only is she very talented and thus everything that she does comes off very natural, but she just has this down-to-earth likability about her. And in this movie, her character is basically our window into this world. She's the one who's not supposed to be there. She wasn't invited. She's the outlier and she plays that role very well. Besides that, it's all in the reflexes. I thought that Ralph Fiennes was also very memorable as the chef. I actually found myself getting kind of wrapped up in his little speeches that he delivers before each course is served. And even based on his appearance, he just has this edge to him that really makes the whole situation feel more and more uncomfortable as the movie progresses. I thought that Nicholas Holt also played a great character. He's Anya's date, but he's also a little eccentric, and he has this kind of mysterious, unhealthy obsession with the chef. Obsess much? Also, shout out to Hong Chaiyu, who gives a small but memorable turn as the direct and blunt hostess of this party. The best part about the menu for me is the uncertainty of what's going on early in the film. It does create these moments of tension where you're just waiting for the pot to boil over. I heard that this movie was loosely based on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and I can definitely see it as an obviously more twisted version of that. So you get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! I think where this movie stumbles, and where a lot of modern movies stumble, is that when it starts to reveal things, it removes some of the mystique that has you interested in the movie. The reveal of the reason why all of this is happening, it just felt very familiar to me. Also, the movie contains these typical movie problems, where you ask yourself, as an audience member, 
The guests have pretty decent numbers, so why aren't they doing more to get themselves out of this situation? They try to explain it away in the story by basically saying these people feel like they deserve to be here, but I just couldn't buy into that idea based on what was being presented to us. I don't think they did a good enough job selling me on the idea that these people wouldn't try to take more action. It's one thing to tell us what's going on, it's another thing altogether to show us through character building. Cowards do that and that ain't you! You're better than that! Also, there's the ending, which, surprise, surprise, fell a little flat for me. These high-concept, mysterious movies always pull me in, at least initially, with the build. But typically, once it comes time for the payoff, they aren't able to match that same energy. And I get it, universally satisfying endings are always going to be difficult to write. This one just felt a little bit too neat for me. Like when a character sees something moments before it may or may not get them out of a situation in the very next scene. I guess it just felt very convenient. No. Overall, I found the menu to be somewhat enjoyable, but lacking when it comes to completing the whole picture. It's an ambitious idea, and I commend them for putting a fresh spin on old cliches. And again, the movie does offer very solid performances, but something about the delivery of the overall message in the final act just left me feeling underwhelmed. Which is disappointing because I did like where we were going until we got there. It's not unwatchable, but it's not life-changing either. I think it was worth watching, it was just a very flawed experience for me overall. I can see it as a movie that you might get more out of the more you watch it. But right now I'm going to have to give it The Cat House. Saved by kitty litter. <laughs> Y'all be cool. Right on.